We want to share some urgent warnings about a potential security issue on the internet that could affect hundreds of millions of people. It involves a piece of code called Log4j used by companies you interact with like Amazon, Apple, Twitter, and even the popular video game Minecraft. Sean Henry is president of services and chief security officer at CrowdStrike, a top cybersecurity firm. He's a former FBI executive assistant director. Good morning to you. We appreciate you being here. Help me understand, I am a Luddite. What does all of this mean and why is it a problem? So Log4j is a very common and widely used utility uh, open source library uh, that software developers use to monitor and track what's happening on their application. So essentially, it's kind of foundational in a lot of applications. It's, it's quite ubiquitous. There are millions of servers around the globe that utilize it. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, there was a vulnerability that was reported in Log4j in the code, and hackers are able to exploit that. And once the hackers exploit it, they essentially have an open door into the network. Um, and because this is used so frequently a- around the world, once hackers get a foothold into the enterprise, they really have uh, uh, open open day within the environment. They've got access to data. They can exfiltrate data. So it's really quite significant and a major concern for companies around the globe. Sean, what's the biggest concern in what data people could steal and how do you protect yourself? How do we counter this? So it's really any type of data, uh, customer records, uh, intellectual property, corporate strategies, et cetera. We're talking about corporations now. But ad- adversaries, once they have access, they also can do things like deploy ransomware. Uh, one, once they've got that open door, it's really this, uh, uh, the sky's the limit. They've got access to anything in that environment. We see adversaries uh, leveraging these, these opportunities. We see nation states that are targeting corporations and government agencies looking for ways in uh, so that they can utilize their skills to get to the most important data that they can either use from a financial perspective or from a national security perspective. Now, Sean, you mentioned government agencies. Uh, you know, we appreciate you telling us what we can do, but oftentimes I think about who's above us and how they can help. So what is the government doing um, to help with this threat? Yeah, the government is fully engaged in this. CISA is the federal government agency uh, as part of DHS that oversees and looks for vulnerabilities. They work very cooperatively with the FBI and with NSA. Um, We're working with CISA as our other companies through a joint cyber defense collaborative, sharing intelligence with them, letting them know what we're seeing in organizations, environments, so that they can help to develop the protocols to overcome this vulnerability, Nate. You know, I know there's been supply chain issues when it comes to electronics, and how does that play into the cyber attack situation? Yeah, the supply chain is something we're very, very concerned about as we look forward into 2022. Essentially, anybody that you do business with, uh, vendors, contractors, subcontractors that might be targeted uh, are, are a potential ingress into your environment. So we see adversaries targeting companies and using that as a leverage to get access into other companies they might not have access to. We also see adversaries targeting software so that they can, by expo- or getting infiltrating companies, exploiting data when people and companies download and update their software In some cases, they're actually downloading these back doors into their environment. So the adversaries have become incredibly creative. They're very, very sophisticated. They're spending a lot of time, money, and effort to gain access to these networks because of the incredible uh, data that they've got. The value of that information is so important to them. Sean, uh, like many of our viewers, you know, I have kids at home. I have 17, 15, and 11, and they use every social media platform. They are in the digital space, purchasing things all of the time. And I'm usually um, a little bit hesitant to give them my credit card or allow them to do things. So what should I be telling my kids and what can the viewer be telling their family members that are using the internet like we all are? Yeah, in these cases that we're talking about with Log4J, these are really issues that need to be addressed by the corporations that are building the applications. But as a user, uh, as a consumer, it's really important to understand uh, not to click on emails, uh, on on links within emails or open attachments in emails Mm -hmm. from somebody that's untrusted. Uh, People are getting ads and unusual uh, uh, emails from folks that sometimes contain malware. You've Mm. got to be alert. The unusual uh, changes in your credit card, um, 
the, you know, the consumer needs to be aware that adversaries are, are targeting them on a regular basis because of the value of the type of information that they've got access to, Nate. Sean Henry, this information is so valuable. Thank you so much for joining us.